Thank you very much. As uh, you've seen in the program so far, the message is about our future, about young leaders and investing in them and protecting them, our students, our activists, our community leaders. That is what MPAC is built to do. The second phase of our program is building allyship. You know, in 1982, we demonstrated against the invasion of Lebanon that costed tens of thousands of lives. At that time, we were alone. There was nobody with us. Now, you see so many groups, student organizations, civic organizations, faith organizations, supporting our cause. That's because we deliberately worked on engaging to bring allies to our community for our protection. That's been the strategic direction of the Muslim Public Affairs Council. And so tonight, we want to have our allies come and speak. And the first one is a very, very special organization. It's an organization that stood for the rights of Palestinians in the name of Judaism, that stood against apartheid policies against the Palestinian people, that stood against racism, that said, not in our name. That organization is Jewish Voices for Peace. Please welcome the Executive Director of Jewish Voices for Peace in Los Angeles, S.T. Chandler. Muslim Public Affairs Council presents this award to Esty Chandler, founder, Jewish Voices for Peace in Los Angeles, the Voice of Courage Award, in gratitude and honor of your courage and commitment advocating for the rights of Palestinians and to peace and security. Thank you. Oh, hey, you, you want to hold it for a second? Thank you very much to MPAC for this honor. On October 28th, Craig Mokhyber, the director of the New York office of the UN High Commissioner for Human Rights, resigned from his job. In his resignation letter, he wrote, what we are watching is genocide. Everyone should be standing up, objecting, and calling for an immediate ceasefire and an end to the genocide. We at Jewish Voice for Peace agree with him, with our hearts and souls and our creativity. We have immense compassion for our Israeli and Jewish families and friends, many of whom are reeling from and terrified by the horrific attacks of October 7th and fears about the continued rise of anti-Semitism in America, as with Islamophobia and other bigotries. It is with fierce determination that we take to the halls of Congress, that we congregate inside and outside congressional offices, in metro stations, on bridges, and at cultural sites to stop business as usual. We're also proud to be in the streets, joining with Palestinians, Arabs, Muslims, Christians, and human rights defenders of every stripe as progressive voices calling for our representatives and policymakers, including President Biden, to follow us and call for ceasefire 
to protect every human life. They should also follow us by calling out and denouncing the horrifying dehumanization of Palestinians by local leaders, government officials, and both mainstream and entertainment media. This is a repulsive tool used to normalize the genocidal assault we continue to protest each and every day. As Jews, we know well how dehumanization is used against oppressed minorities to justify their subjugation and murder. And to that we say, never again includes everyone. <laughs> Zionist advocacy organizations, including the ADL, recently published an open letter outrageously urging college and university administrators to investigate their campus chapters of Students for Justice in Palestine. The oppression is moving so swiftly that the ACLU, which doesn't take political positions, recently published an open letter calling on college and university presidents to reject calls to investigate, disband, and penalize student groups based on their exercise of free speech rights. But it seems Columbia University didn't get the message. As yesterday, it shamefully suspended both their SJP and JVP chapters. Friends, we are in dangerous times when taking a pro-human life position, calling for a ceasefire, also leads Rashida Tlaib, our only Palestinian member of Congress, to being censored and disingenuously accused of anti-Semitic rhetoric, when nothing could be more Jewish than calling for a ceasefire to end the killing, maiming, and unimaginable suffering of our fellow human beings in Gaza. It is abundantly clear that our elected representatives and many community leaders have sunk to a new low. And to that we say, never again means everyone. We should all send thank you messages to righteous leaders who have stood by Rashida, including Ilhan Omar, Cori Bush, Jamal Bowman, Summer Lee, and of course, the California leader upon whose shoulders they all stand, Representative Barbara Lee. <laughs> Islamophobia is festering here in America, fueled by the conflation of anti-Zionism with anti-Semitism and the false notion that criticism of the state of Israel is anti-Semitic. It is not. And in our communities, people across many professions, including journalism, the environment, entertainment, and technology, are being fired or forced to resign from their jobs for taking a stance, for writing or vocal vocalizing support for the Palestinian cause for freedom and equality. Again, we say, not in our names. <laughs> Jews from DC to New York to Philadelphia and right here in Los Angeles simply will no longer allow the suffering of our people, the pogroms, the Holocaust, or Hamas killings 
to be weaponized against others. Let us all be clear, Israeli apartheid and occupation and U.S. government complicity in that oppression are the source of these decades of violence that we continue to witness today. Occupation and apartheid must end to stop it. Our immediate demand is clear. Ceasefire now. Because never again must include everyone. We dedicate this humbling honor to the truly courageous leaders of our movement the Palestinian people. Thank you very much. We'll see you in the streets.